Thirty or so years after he arrived in London, Chano decided that it was time to see the sights. All I saw was the House of Parliament and that was in 1979. It was a project, much equipment was needed, preparations were made. Chano bought a pair of shorts which hung just below his knees. He tried them on and filled the numerous pockets with a compass, guidebook, binoculars, bottled water, maps and two types of disposable camera. Thus loaded the shorts hung at mid-calf. He bought a baseball cap and wore it around the flat with a visor variously angled up and down and turned round to the back of his head. A money bell secured the shorts around his waist and prevented them from reaching his ankles. He made a list of tourist attractions and devised a star rating system that encompassed historical significance, something he termed entertainment factor and value for money. The girls would enjoy themselves. They were forewarned of this requirement. That is taken from the middle of the novel Brick Lane by Monica Ali. And now you're going to see my review of this book that was written and was published in 2003. My name is Rainer and this here is Rainier Books. Brick Lane is Monica Ali's debut novel. It was published in 2003 when the author was 35 years old. She was born in 1967. Um, before the book was released, Monica Ali was already listed by Granta as best of young, among the best of young British novelists. It was shortlisted for the then Man Booker Prize, as it was called at the time. Uh, the prize did not go to Monica Ali, it went to the novel Vernon Got Little by the Australian author DBC Pierre, aka Peter Warren Finlay. Monica Ali was born in the capital of Bangladesh in 1967 when it wasn't Bangladesh. She had a Bangladeshi father and an English mother and at age three Monica and her family moved to England in 1970. Actually many people moved from Bangladesh to the UK in the 1970s. We'll come back to that. Monica studied philosophy, economics and politics at Oxford University and Brick Lane. You might ask if you are not a Londoner, if you're not from England, if you're not from Great Britain. Brick Lane is a street in the uh, community of Tower Hamlets in East London, beginning close to the underground station Aldgate East. It is a community around Brick Lane, especially in that starting point of Brick Lane, where a large number of Bangladeshis, of Bengali people emigrate to the UK in the 1970s. Bangladesh is one of the most densely populated countries in the world. It exists only like 52 years. It was founded in 1971. It broke out from Pakistan in 1971 and declared independence after a war that led to the Gonotta, the genocide, the largest genocide after the Holocaust in the 20th century. Approximately between 300,000 and 3 million people were killed. Hundreds of thousands of women were raped. The new country, Bangladesh, had a very difficult start. The possibility to move to the UK was there and many, many Bangladeshis went. In the beginning of the novel, 18-year-old Nazneen is sent from Bangladesh to London to marry a man in his early 40s. His name is Chanu. When Nazneen moves to London, immigration for Bengalis is already limited to wives and children because the immigration was so strong that Great Britain and the United Kingdom decided to limit it. It is not Chanu's marriage and Nazneen's marriage is not a love marriage. It is a marriage that was arranged by Nazneen's parents and by Chanu's relatives. That word love marriage comes appears quite a couple of times in that novel Brick Lane and it will be the fifth the title of the fifth novel that Monica Ali published in 2022 is the title Love Marriage. It's a different book. I reviewed it. I put a link down below. Chanu is a lot older than Nazneen, but he's a decent man. He's a nice man. And Nazneen can be happy about the fact that Chanu treats her sort of well. Does not beat her up, says the narrator. In the first few years, Nazneen is very much confined to her small apartment in Tower Hamlets in London. She does not speak much English. For years, she knows only words like sorry or thank you and cannot communicate with most of the people out there. 
but she gets what she needs. Chano buys her stuff and she can also visit Bangladeshi stores, she can speak Bengali and she doesn't need to speak English, she doesn't seem to need to speak English. Chano has always big plans, he wants to be rich, he wants to go back to Bangladesh at some point, he wants to build a bright and beautiful future for his wife Nazneen and for his children that are coming first, they have a son and the son dies at a very young age, only a couple of months old, that's not a spoiler, it's in the beginning part of a novel and after that they will have two daughters. Chanu is always bragging about the history of Bangladesh, the greatness of Bangladesh, about the poor and miserable lives that British people have to live and that they should envy the great country of Bangladesh and its history. Monica Ali builds a huge set of characters in this novel, a huge cast of characters within the Bengali community. We have Mrs. Islam, an elderly woman who is actually a loan shark. She's lending out money with high interest rates. She's giving money for Nazneen and Chanu, for Nazneen to buy a sewing machine and for Chanu to buy a computer. And she takes high interest rates so that they never sort of get rid of their debt to Mrs. Islam. There's a woman called Razia Iqbal, who has an abusive husband and two sons who, and Razia Iqbal becomes Nazneen's best friend in London. Of course, there is a guy, a younger man, a younger guy called Kareem, who Nazneen will have a relationship with. And in Bangladesh, we still have Nazneen's sister, younger sister, Hasina, whose life we follow through letters that she sends to Europe. Hasina lives a very difficult, a very poor life with an abusive husband that she flees from. Then she has another relationship and she is working in a factory. And Mr. Chowdhury, who is the boss of the factory, he's going to rape Hasina. There's a lot of violence against women that we see in the letters, that we experience in the letters that Hasina writes to Nazneen in London. And even women are, are subjected to acid attacks that people that men throw acid, put throw acid in their faces and destroy their faces and even kill them with acid attacks. This has been happening quite many times uh, over the years in Bangladesh. And the reason is very often family dispute or neglected sexual um, propositions. The world that Monica Ali has created in her book in Brick Lane is a very vivid world. It's a great picture, the characters are believable, the composition is exquisite. Nonetheless, when Hasina's letters sort of carry the plot for a few years onwards, we have only Hasina's letters at one point who carries the novel for a couple of years. Ali weaves together a lot of topics like forced marriage, like immigration to the United Kingdom, the Bengali community in Tower Hamlets, violence against women, racism in the UK against Bengali immigrants, and of course also 9-11. In the 1970s and onwards there were a lot of violent racist attacks against Bangladeshi immigrants in England. In 1978 Altab Ali 24-year-old leather factory worker was murdered by two 17 and one 16-year-old boy in London. And there's a park uh, close to Tower ha in Tower Hamlets, there's a little park that was named after Altab Ali and is the Altab Ali Park now. Brick Lane is closely associated with the Bengali immigrants to the UK, to London, and that's why the novel carries its name, Brick Lane. In 2003, the novel was widely praised, but it got also criticism from parts of the Bengali community for stereotypical description of characters of the community. In 2007, the novel it was very successful, became a movie directed by Sarah Gavron, who debuted it with this movie and starring the Indian actress and now even director Tanishta Chatterjee as Nazneen. Some of the critics of the novel's depiction of people say that Monica Ali has never lived in Tower Hamlets. She started in Oxford. However, I think that she has painted her characters not as despicable or stereotypical. There's a lot of affection towards and even humor in those characters and she's not despising her characters. She's not sort of bad-mouthing about her characters. Chanu is, 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 is depicted as a, is one of the favorite characters of many people who have read the novel. Um, of course, we have topics like forced marriage, abuse, and horrific violence against women. Uh, they're not easy stuff, but seeing information that is available online 
it seems to be true that this has happened and this happens, forced marriages and violence against women. Brick Lane is Monica Ali's first novel. It is a powerful book that introduces an important part of Londoners to a world audience. Despite all the topics it discusses, I read it first and foremost as a strong portrait of two Bengali sisters, Nazneen and Hasina. And interestingly, Nazneen was born in 1967, in the same year when Monica Ali, the author, was born. So I sort of also read it as another possibility of a life from somebody born in Bangladesh. Because that's what they share, birthplace and birth year, the character and the author. And this is a portrait of two Bengali women who are trying to live their own lives and they want to break free from the rules and the roles that the world around them has made them to limit them as wives and mothers. And they are more. And this is a very feminist novel as well. I really loved the book. It has some lengths. It's more than 400 pages long. And when you read on Goodreads, the reviews, then people are really criticizing that it's too long. But you really have to sort of um, accept that, I guess. It's not a book that I wanted to put aside. Not in any case, because I understood that it carries so much topics and that it is sort of a deep, a portrait in depth of Tower Hamlets and of these two women. I liked it very much. If you have read Brick Lane as well, please tell me in the comments down below what you thought about it. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a like if you liked that review and I see you soon. Bye.